Hello everybody, welcome to the fourth installment of EcoCast. Today with me, I have Mr. Wizard. As usual. And today we have a special guest. Today we have Eric Anderson, which is the lead engineer, I believe, for um, Eco. Is that right, Eric? Uh, yeah, more or less tech director, but yeah. Okay, tech director. Today's episode is going to focus on Eric, and we're going to ask him some questions and see what he has to say, and hopefully we can find out some good stuff. You want to start, Wizard? Sure, I can go first. Um, so just a general, you want to tell us a little bit about what you do and the job you do and sort of how, how it is being on the team. Uh, sure, so I'm kind of like the lead of all the, of the entire technical side of the project, so all the coding, I manage all of our other uh, programmers we have currently and uh, designing like the architecture of the game and how everything is structured. I work with uh, kind of t kind of take John's design and basically write up how it's going to work technically and then go from there. Hmm. So okay. You're, you're the one that makes the vision the reality as far as the, the technical side of, of it all. Um, the nitty gritty, the programming side of things, I guess. Yeah, I mean, uh, John's a programmer too. That's that's his background as well. But uh, mm -hmm. he wants to focus more on the design. So, but he he still does programming as well. I'm just kind of like the the main guy, I suppose. For that, for that, for that yeah. side, and he's the design guy. Okay, yeah, Not, that, that lets him focus on on um, his vision of Eco and how he wants it to to play out. So that instead of worrying about uh, programming it it himself. He has you do that, and then he can sort of formulate in his mind how he wants the game to, to pan out. And I'm sure he also is in charge of a bunch of other things, being um, the lead lead designer, I guess he is, of, uh, of the game. Yeah, and, and John, John still does a lot of programming as well. He's kind of taking on the, uh, the simulation side of it, so like how animals are simulated, how all that works. Darn, I have a lot of questions about that. We've got to get him on here now, because I have, I have a lot of questions on that one. Well, I'm but, sure uh, Eric knows. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, what yeah, were going to say? I'm, I'm kind of in charge of, like, everything, so I have to kind of know a little bit about everything. So, but yeah. Okay, cool. I have, a, I have an interesting question. <laughs> um, can you say John's last name? It's a Krajewski. Are you sure that's is how that, you say it, or are you just I, saying uh, that? <laughs> no one on the entire internet knows how to say that, so... I think it's uh, Polish, I think. Interesting. Okay. I think so. Um, Let me see. I'm trying to remember if I spoke to him about that, because my, my wife is Polish, and when I looked at it, I was like, oh, I know how to say this, and then... Um, <laughs> in an off-the-air conversation um, with Fuller, uh, I asked him, and he had, he had no idea. And I, I just wanted to know if you knew how to say it. I think it yeah, it's Krajewski is always how he says it. So That's how he okay. says it? Interesting. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Right. Okay, so I got another one for you. Just, you can't tell me, John, anyone else, who is the most interesting person on the team of the eco developers to talk to, or a better uh, question, who would you recommend for the podcast that we interview next? Actually, I was just asking who is like the most interesting personality, but that's a better question. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely John, but I think you should get one of our artists next time if he or at some point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm gonna have okay. to get the contacts, but okay, one of the artists. Yeah, Mil Milenko is in. Uh... Australia, so he's he's one of all the, the scheduling leaders. issues. Will oh my work. god! <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's pretty much like when we're going to when we're leaving work. He's just getting up, so yeah, you have to read his messages as you uh, wake up, and vice versa. Yeah, I know how that goes. Um, planning this podcast. Uh, George lives in the UK. Yeah, we couldn't have George. Who knows where he's at? And then I'm in in Florida. And then this guy is over here, uh, Mr. Wizard. Where are you? You're in, like, California? In California. Yeah, he's in California. So it's just 
time zones everywhere, and it's always difficult to find the sweet spot for a time to have the podcast. All right, shoot your other questions, wizard. Okay, so getting into actual, like, related to the game stuff, can you tell us how many different buildings there are? Or if not that, how many skills, if you have a number for that even yet? Uh, there's no set number right now. We're going to kind of, like, definitely build it up over time. Um, yeah. For, for Alpha, we want to have the first, like, full-on tech tree all the way out to the meteor prevention device. Um, but none of that is, like, set in stone yet, so okay. I don't, have, I don't have a solid number. You're just and then building on skills, you do you, like, I mean, I know you're going to be adding skills, that's been said mo- many times, but do you have an idea for Alpha or not even, nothing near that yet? Uh, not a not a number that I can give, but okay. uh, I mean you can you can expect the normal range of yeah yeah pretty much what you would expect initially, and then we want to kind of branch out as as it goes along. It's also it also should be really easy to add skills like just yeah. from a modding perspective. Perspective, so yeah, I've been looking at the uh, the stuff you guys have already released, and that's really interesting on the modding aspect of the game. Mm-hmm. Probably, I'd have to say what I'm most excited for at this point is the modding, just because that's going to give the game so much, what's the word, horizontality, able, like, it'll be more able to do more things, I guess. Yeah, well, in the last podcast, we talked about how uh, modding has extended the life of Minecraft and um, other games, so modding definitely will help out eco, and it'll bring a nice flavor uh, to the community and how the community interacts with the game itself. Yeah, yeah we have... Even... Go ahead, Eric, sorry. Sorry, uh, we, we have uh, in our developer developer tier, some of the people we have are actually from the Minecraft modding community, so they're really interested in kind of like... Oh, I'm sure. ...getting yeah. started there and kind of seeing like how it works and maybe what they can do there, so... Yeah. I'm excited to see all the, the big names from Minecraft transfer over to Eco and see how that goes, because I, I already talked to a few of the guys that I know who are quote-unquote big names who are looking at this, um, and it's it's going to be very interesting to see what people like, the kind of guys who came out with, uh, for instance, the Ether mod for Minecraft come out with for this. It's oh, just the exciting to me. Don't. I, I don't know those people. I know the people who made Ether. Mm. What? Yeah, one of the tech guys is actually yeah, that's one of the guys we talked to. Oh, that's to. exciting. So, uh, I, I kind of pitched it, or I kind of like proposed it to John. Uh, as far as like modding is concerned, is more of like a Field of Dreams type thing. If you're familiar with that movie, field where the dreams. I own it. Where it's like a, if you build it, they will come type thing. So, oh, okay, of course. We build the mod kit, then uh, hopefully they will. All oh, modders will come. Yeah. I mean, that only makes sense. Um, and the approach that you guys are taking with Eco, I am surprised that other games haven't done that to that extent because that just seems the most, like, the most logical thing to do. Just build, like, help out the modders because we know that there's plenty of people out there that know how to do this and that can make amazing things because that's just, the internet is filled with amazing people. And having that platform ready for them when the game launches is just you know it's going to make a lot of people happy and in turn they're going to make amazing stuff and it's going to make us happy everybody wins yeah you left like as just to answer your question on why other companies hadn't done that i think there's a kernel of of truth in the fact that that doesn't actually benefit the company a great deal other than just more player base because mods don't cost anything which is why they haven't been encouraged in the past but uh, that's a good point do you do you guys have some there was there have been like hints and little bits about some quest system where players can give tasks to other players and i'm excited for that but it, it doesn't like there's nothing concrete on it really yeah i think the idea, idea there is around um creating contracts for other players to fulfill so like if if you need a house built or something, you could create a contract for someone to build your house, and that would be kind of like a quest for the person to build your house for you. 
And it has um, yeah. time parameters as well as building specification parameters that would have to be met in order to receive the the GPs. <laughs> the idea yeah, being like, it. not only are there items, but like the, the contracts are items as well. So if you want to like trade with someone, if someone wants to give you like five wood, you could trade like, oh, I'll, I'll build your house for five wood or whatever. So like that, a bartering That's yeah. kind of the idea. Yeah. Okay, so, cool. so I have a question that's not currently on the script, but I was just wondering, do you, like, this is sort of on everyone's minds because, you know, it's constantly being compared to Minecraft because of the art style and such, but do you have a world size, like an idea, are they going to be really small or big-ish or like world size? I know the world is finite, but that... Well, I can answer that. <laughs> you Really? Yeah. Where did you get that? Um, I talked to... Send me a link. Well, there's no links. But as far as I know, and then Eric can elaborate on what I'm about to say, that there's different world types. There's, no, there's not one set world size, and it all depends on the players, how many players are on the server. Because if the world is too big and there's not enough players, then you run into a problem with... Uh, you have too many materials and there's not really any incentives to uh, to look out for your resources, you know? And if the world is too small and there's a lot of players and no matter how hard you try, you guys are going to run out of resources as well. So it depends on how many people are playing. But Eric can elaborate on that and tell me uh, how you guys are dealing with that problem. Uh, yeah, it'll, it'll really be up to the server owner how big they want their world to be. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty much just based on how many players you expect to have and wanting to okay, have like that's... a world size that's big enough, but not like too that's big. The world we had for PAX was uh, like half a square kilometer, so that's just kind of an example of what, oh, really? what okay. we've been going with so far. And how many players on average did you have that, just to give us an idea? Well, we only had three machines set up at any given okay. time, but uh, I don't know. We probably went through a couple hundred players in the world. Um, yeah, but but three machines at any given time. Okay, interesting. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Uh, Fuller was uh, telling me that it's it's kind of tough to find that sweet spot of the right size of the world versus how many players. So I'm wondering, are you guys gonna have um, like a cap, like the option to set a player cap so that you maintain uh, order, I guess, in the event that you get an influx of players, then it'll mess up the whole uh, economy, I guess, and the whole environment. So is that a feature of the world sizes? Uh, we haven't set anything like that up, but uh, I mean, oh, okay. certainly, certainly an easy thing to add actually so yeah that that i because i really don't want to see a future in which there is a server that's like i'm gonna post an advertisement on this website and then some youtubers yeah, like attacked. pewdiepie's like i'm gonna play on this server guys come play with me and then the server dies horribly because <laughs> <laughs> you know that sort of thing like that was obviously in uh hyperbole but do, yeah, that that's yeah. something I would be concerned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think most servers will probably be a whitelist of players yeah. they want in. So okay, but yeah, it's it's really servers. yeah, it's really up to the server operator whatever they want to do. Okay, and that's... that'll be interesting to see that develop. That'll actually be really interesting seeing how people use their servers and whether they try and turn a profit off them like a like a Minecraft server or something. Yeah. Um. I have an interesting question I just thought up of. Um, how do you feel about uh, the way the media has been portraying Eco so far? That's a good uh, question. I think it's mostly been positive. There's been a lot of... Yeah, I, I mean, there, there's been a few negatives. Well, mo most of the things I guess you could say negative are mostly around the uh, normal Kickstarter-y type maybe this game will never be finished type stuff. Okay. Um, but uh, other than that, everyone's been like, yeah, this is 
How do you feel about the comparison to Minecraft? Because that's constantly happening. Uh, I think it's it's just another one of those things the industry has to go through. It's I mean, back it's in the days, yeah. of, back in the days of Doom, everything was a Doom clone. So now <laughs> yep. every game, every game that's voxel is now a Minecraft clone. So it just has to get get past that stage. Yeah, yeah. I always try to tell people it's a voxel game, like Minecraft. Where others would say this is a game like Minecraft, and that those are two different statements. I wish not. Uh, Notch would take a look at Eco. I don't know if he has, but I've tried tweeting at him like, "Hey, look at this!" But I don't think it's. <laughs> he probably gets so much that at this point. Uh, yeah. let's, I would say some of the uh, the funnier stuff has been. I mean, uh, part of, part of the project has been funded from a grant, so um, it has yeah. drawn uh, some attention from uh, people who are critical of government spending and they kind of <laughs> see it as like a waste of money so that would mm, be kind of interesting mm -hmm. yeah I, I'm sure a lot of uh, criticism will come out of that too um, I hate to use the term real world but in the world that is not on the internet yeah you guys got a government grant which meant that a lot of money went into funding this and it is a video game, and I'm sure people have had mixed reviews about funding a video game for the purpose of teaching kids about the economy and uh, the ecosystem of the world. So, how did you guys respond to that, I guess, since that already happened? Oh, uh, well, like, kind of Strange Loops games on, uh, Strange Loops stance on uh, educational type games. We've done educational games in the past, this would be like. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like the fifth one or something like that. Yeah. But uh, educational games in the past are more like uh, it's like they force curriculum upon you and then they let you play a game for five minutes. It's not mm -hmm. really like I've played those. It's not really like you're playing the game and you're learning at the same time, kind of like implicitly. It's just like it's like okay, do this little math quiz or whatever. Okay, now play this little shooter game for five minutes. Okay, so you. Um... <laughs> you disguise it with pretty graphics, basically. All the, well, the learning parts. Well, not at all, though, because if you simulate the world, people are going to learn real-world lessons without having to stop playing the game. Am I am I getting that right? Yeah, you know, I think I think a lot of the learning from this type of game is going to come out of like uh, this like outside of game discussion about like what's going on. So maybe like. You look, you look at the data and you see that all the wolves are dying or whatever, and then the teacher can like start a discussion between all the students in the class about why they think this is happening and like kind of like cause and effect and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is basically what you guys have seen when you've done the test runs in the, in the schools. Oh uh, yeah, the few tests. I'm interested in the game's meta because I'm sure the game is going to have an interesting meta. How do I explain this? You know what I'm talking I, about, Wizard? Yeah, let me try this one. So you're still saying you're worrying about how the... You're, you're, you're excited, say, for how people will plan out their servers in advance. Is that what I'm getting at? Is that... Um, or do like you, let the, me see if Eric... The way people will play the game using knowledge. Sort of, yes. Like the... Eric, do you do you know what I mean by the game's meta? Talking about the the game outside of the game. Yeah, see, Eric knows what I'm talking about. Like, Eco is a game where you have to balance your resources and your people, right? And make sure everything's fine. But I'm sure just that in itself will create something greater than itself. And there's gonna be a lot of people trying to like play the system and trying to work around things and use like the data to their advantage and things are gonna get things are gonna get tri tricky and that'll be the game's meta the most efficient ways to do things and when you're not playing the game ways to win the game or you know advance in the game yeah yeah no I I, I understand the concept of that I just didn't know what you were getting at yeah it's hard to explain um, but the, the way he internet. said it, the way he said it is is the definition basically the game outside of the game. Um, 
have you thought about this? Um, have the, has the development team thought about this and uh, threats that that might um, pose to the game itself? I think just aside from we don't want it to be like you just go to this wiki and know exactly like what to do on which days in order to get to the desired result. Mm-hmm. I'm going to kind of have it built into the design where there's more interaction between players so you can't really you can't really like write a guide to where you can go okay do this on day yeah. two do this on day three yada 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 okay you win it's more of like you need someone to do this you need someone to do that you need to trade stuff here and there um and i think that's where a lot of the metagame is going to come into play where people are kind of like planning out maybe even before they start a new server or anything where people are kind of like deciding what roles they're going to fulfill and how they're going to inter- interact and what the, what kind of like the structure is going to be, who's going to do the research, who's going to get what skills, stuff like that. Okay. Um, a thing that I was thinking about is that there's a, currently a material, which I think is stone, that does not allow, um, I don't know if this is correct, does not allow pollution to go through or it slows it down? Yeah, there's different, different blocks uh, move pollution at different rates, so... Okay. Well, I know with water, stone completely cuts off the water. And I'm just thinking of all the systems that people are going to be making using these things to their advantage. So the same way that Minecraft has um, mob farms, there's going to be farms of that sort in the game. That's just manipulation of the blocks and the game mechanics so that they can get the most efficient yeah, resources. Yeah. Um... As someone who is in the Minecraft scene really, really early, that sort of meta takes a long time to figure out right. Like, like a really long time. People are going to be a lot better at it because Minecraft is the first of its mm-hmm. kind, but that whole, like, figuring out how the mob farms work at optimal rates, someone has to put, like, a thousand hours into that to get that data together. Not even joking. I know a few guys who did that sort of thing as well. I don't yeah. know why. And but so that'll be a while before that stuff starts actually coming out, even if it can. The, judging by the amount of, like he just said, trade would affect the way the game played, right? Which means no server can ever be the same ever unless you've got the exact same people and they make the exact same set of decisions. So that'll be, if, if trade actually affects the way the game works for whatever reason, that's going to basically destroy a lot of the, the like gather x materials meta right away yeah that's true i mean you have to work as a team i was gonna ask how has the experience of working with the community and the, uh specifically the dev community been for you guys because from the blog you guys are getting stuff done so that's pretty cool how, how has that been, and how are you guys doing currently? Yeah, it's been a, a learning process. Um, we did have some instances of people being a little bit too bossy and aggressive from the dev community, but uh, a lot of the other people are very, very helpful, especially on the website, where I think Strangeloop is more, more weak on, in terms of like web development and that sort of thing. There, we for whatever reason, we have a lot of web devs in the, in the dev tier, and they've been helping us out, so it's oh, been pretty really? great. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so like John's, well, I guess the update hasn't gone out yet. It'll go out on Monday, but uh, oh boy, more stuff to talk. About. How we're how we're setting the uh, trying to make up this API for web developers to build different interfaces into the game and kind of like be able to manipulate and do different things. It's going to be pretty interesting. So, Trance, you have to get this episode out before Monday now. <laughs> well, they kind of touched up on that on the first um, dev blog, though. I'm joking. About the, um, the API. Are you involved in the test server? Because I, I would assume you guys have a test server running for, like, testing your uh, game mechanics and stuff. Is... Because... Everyone, for whatever reason, the, like, biggest question that I have seen asked by the eco community is, like, what are we going to do for cash? That's been brought up, like, four, what, twice on this show alone and 
two or three times other places. So, yeah. I think it's going to be the, uh, one of the more interesting things is because we don't really have... We don't really want to have, like, a fixed currency. So the currency is going to be whatever... It'll be interesting to see what, what the currency becomes, basically. Like, maybe it'll start out and it'll be, like, berries or something that everybody needs. And then maybe over time it'll evolve into something more... Uh, like, maybe ore or something else. But it can also depend, like, player to player. It's more like... Part. If you're, if you're like, a... If you're a builder and you need lots of lumber, maybe your currency is lumber, so you want to... Whenever you're trading with anyone, you want lumber. Or maybe if you're a cook, then you want, you know, you want uh, hunted meat or whatever. But um, there's not really going to be any set, like, gold or whatever that you can yeah. collect. It's going to yeah. be... Uh, no, that's good. We, we think we think that the a currency will certainly evolve, but we're not sure what it will necessarily be right offhand. Well, so I was I was going to ask, um, is there any items that you can think about that aren't skill dependent at the moment? Um, I mean, there's all the ones that you can harvest from the environment. They're probably the a good portion of them we could probably get from the start, but. Uh, None of that stuff is set in stone yet, so I can't really okay. say definitively Fair Fair one enough. way or the other. Because the way I'm thinking is that um, anything that you have for currency will be dependent on skill. So if you have logs, the person who, who does wood cutting will have the, you know more logs than everyone else. The same thing with gold, the person that does mining, and that way it branches out to skills. But the way you can have one centralized currency would be something that no matter what your skill is, you would have a chance to go out and get it. So that could be a currency. Maybe it could yeah. be grass. I don't know. <laughs> I think some form of food will probably be the primary one for yeah. a good portion of time because everyone will need it in some fashion. Um, well, and it will all pretty much give the same thing. It will just give you your health back so or yeah. increase your skill gain rate. But... Uh, Perhaps berries, or if if that's in, but um, food as far as food goes, that the uh, the cook has the advantage on that one. No one will have a high cooking skill for a long time because it's a non-essential skill. I would think a lot of people are not going to be like, let's max our cook skill because there are so many other useful things we can do. Yeah, but well, you'll be more efficient and skilled. That, no, I I see that, but it'll take time for people to figure that out. At least in alpha. I mean, the other thing with food, though, is that it uh, degrades, so it's kind of like a currency that already has built-in deflation, I guess. <laughs> you also need different proteins, um, correct? Yeah, you need different types of food. You can't survive off of one specific food. Yeah, yeah the idea is, like, the more varied types of food you have, the, the healthier you are type thing. I think yeah. there, there's, a, there's a few games that do it this way, but... but uh, but yeah. Okay, cool. Still cool. Um, how's that UI rework? Uh, there have been a few screenshots I've sent out. I can send you, I can send you one after this if you want to use it. But um, yeah, sure. Yeah, Malenko got our uh, first pass UI brought in, so I've just been, I've actually been bringing that over the past week. So we've got like our new toolbar and our new uh, different windows and different sort of things. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I saw the the concepts on the dev blog, on the first dev blog, there was a bunch of concepts of what it would look like. So I'd imagine you have to wait for him to do the art to then uh, add what the buttons do, or can you do that beforehand and then just like easily attach what the code is to the graphics, or how, how does that work? Uh, yeah, you can code it all up without art, so just the, okay. the term is programmer art, right? Um, mm. And then when he gets his stuff going, then you kind of plug it in. Okay, cool. Um, is Keegan back from vacation? <laughs> <laughs> I think he gets back early October, I think. Oh, okay. he's, yeah, he's been that's, gone that's for like an entire idea. month. Oh my god, what, what does Keegan do? Uh, he's one of our artists. Oh, okay. Milenko is uh, cranking it over time. 
Yeah, so Malenko, he was off the project for a bit, but then he's come back, so nice. he's been... About the same time Keegan went on break, Malenko came back, so... Okay, that's good. Yeah, um... I, I think we're out of questions, yeah? I believe so. Let me see how, how much time we've been running. About 32 uh, minutes. Yeah. 33. Perfect timing. Yeah, um, any... Any final words? Any final questions? Do you have anything you want to say to the community that you can't say much more obviously in a dev blog? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been great. This is the first... Uh, I've been in the game industry for about 12 years now, so it's the first time I've ever really started interacting with the community before this. Um, I was at like, AAA companies before where you pretty much didn't tell anyone anything. <laughs> Yeah, you were just oh, I, I, I'm a I'm a programmer basically. I work on this game. Yeah, the, yeah, the indie that's... scene is uh, completely different. It's pretty much tell everyone everything all the time. And don't, don't like <laughs> that. Keep secrets. That's what Fuller said too. Yeah, it's definitely. So, yeah, it's been pretty. It's been pretty great. So. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for for your time. Uh, we look forward to the next uh, dev blog to see what you guys are working on, what else you guys can reveal. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks guys. So Trance, you have to get this episode out before Monday now. <laughs>